My name is Andy Holloman. I'm the Corporate Safety Director for AR Chesson Construction Company. Today, this is, a, this is a big day for the town and for AR Chesson and Jones and Frank, our subcontractor. Uh, we've just successfully installed a 10,000 gallon and 12,000 gallon underground storage tank for the storage of, of vehicle fuels for the fleet for the town vehicles. Uh, we had an inspector from North Carolina Department of Environment and Natural Resources on site today. Uh, she first uh, inspected the tanks to uh, ensure that they looked okay, that there was no obvious exterior damage. We pressurized the inner tank to a, a measure of four inches of water column. Uh, that had to maintain that for a period of one hour. Uh, there is uh, also a brine solution between the inner and outer tanks that's a bright blue color. Uh, we had to measure that level and ensure that we didn't lose any or gain too much, which would have indicated a leak in from the inner tank. Um, and uh, we maintained that test for one hour, at which time all of the test results came back. Uh, perfect as a matter of fact, no leaks anywhere and we were able to release the pressure off of it. She signed off on us moving the tanks. Once they were in the pit, she inspected again to make sure that there was uh, no damage had been done to them during the move and she signed off on the installation and told us that we could go ahead and begin our backfill operations. What we, what we did, we started out by laying out uh, the surface, uh, cutting the uh, concrete that was already here, the parking lot area. Uh, we then drove 25 foot sheet piles uh, around the perimeter, a 20 foot by 40 foot opening. And then we excavated the earth from inside those sheet piles um, down to a depth of 12 feet. We laid one foot of number eight stone gravel in the bottom. And then we placed uh, eight dead men concrete blocks that weighed 2,550 pounds apiece in order to strap down two underground storage tanks, one holding 10,000 gallons and the other one holding 12,000 gallons. The 10,000 gallon tank weighs in at about 5,900 pounds. The 12,000 gallon tank weighs about 6,300 pounds. Uh, we, uh, we lifted them in place with a, a 350 loader um, that loader is classified as a 50-ton machine, I believe. Uh, it's, it's pretty substantial. Um, we didn't have any trouble at all lifting them and lowering them into place. Uh, what we'll do now is those tanks are being strapped down to those concrete dead men with fiberglass straps, and then we'll start backfilling with this number eight stone. There's 350 tons of number eight stone that's going in or, or around and on top of those tanks, followed by an earthen fill, which will be tamped, and then eight inches of concrete will be poured back on top of that. There'll be a service island installed with regular fuel pumps, just like a service station that town vehicles can come up to, fill up, whether it's gasoline or diesel fuel, and uh, this will be a, a big savings to the town because they'll be able to negotiate rates buying at wholesale prices when they need fuel because they'll be able to take a full tanker load at a time. A tanker load is generally 7,500 to 8,500 gallons. Having this 10,000 gallon and 12,000 gallon tank will allow them to purchase a tanker load at the time and save a whole lot of money over buying it from the pump. And what? Uh in your experience was kind of the timeline to recoup the costs of the uh, insulation through the savings that you needed the fuel. We had a conversation this morning about that and we believe it'll fluctuate given fuel prices, crude oil prices, but within eight to ten years this should completely pay for itself. And these tanks will be here long after we're all gone. Um, one of the things we did before we broke ground was installed a well point system. We installed 44 inch and a half well points to a depth of 30 feet to actually draw water out of the ground to attempt to dry that area up so it would make digging easier. 
Um, unfortunately, we ran into some rain Saturday and Sunday and early Monday morning prior to beginning our dig. Uh, we hit groundwater at about seven and a half feet that we had to control. And then uh, we hit another substantial vein of water at about 10 feet that we had to control. And uh, the pumps have run continuously since last Thursday. We had to install two more surface wells in order to keep the water up out of the pit so we could get the tanks installed and tied down. Once they're tied down and we've backfilled them with gravel, uh, we can cut those pumps off. The natural water table will come back and resume at probably about three feet below surface. And uh, those tanks are, are a polyvinyl, the outer tank's a polyvinyl material. It's rated to live its life underwater if necessary with no leaks. We, uh, it was a fairly confined area that we had to, to do this in. Um, we didn't want to put that machine on your nice concrete out here and break up any more than we had already had to cut up. Uh, so uh, that operator with Jones and Frank did an excellent job of maneuvering that big machine and putting those tanks in place and not doing any further damage. Uh, the real complexity on this job site was the water table issues that we had to deal with. Typically, a little further inland, you don't have that. To, you, know, you, you set those well points and it'll dry your area right up down to sufficient depth for you to excavate, put your rock in, put your dead men in, install your tanks, and, and uh, stay dry the whole time. Unfortunately, these guys worked in, you know, in water above from their ankles to their knees almost the whole time, but they got it done. It's a real credit to Jones and Frank. They did an excellent job. Anything else you want to talk about? You want to talk about the other projects that you want to do? This is a, a, a multi-phase project. Uh, we started some six months ago with the police department um, evidence storage room. Uh, we went in, enlarged it, added to it, um, made it about twice as big as it was, uh, gave them more storage inside by uh, installing a mezzanine so they'll have a, an upstairs storage in there as well and then put a new nice 612 pitch A-frame roof on it for them. Um, the administrative offices here for Public Works were in need of some, some remodeling. Uh, we lifted it several inches, blocked it uh, up to a, a wainscot height and then we're paneling the exterior of that and giving it a real upfit. Uh, new decks on the outside, uh, handicap ramps and that sort of thing. And then we've got a new public works garage that's being con that is going to be constructed here behind me. Uh, we'll start digging footings on that next week. We've had a, a, a long partnership with the town. We've worked, uh, worked with them before on some smaller projects. This is the biggest project we've done for them and uh, we're pleased to be working here in Kill Devil Hills and we hope you're pleased with us.